This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge, sanctioned by the U.S. government. Weapons of class 4 and lower have been authorized for use during the purge. All other weapons are restricted. Government officials of ranking 10 have been granted immunity from the purge and shall not be harmed. Commencing at the siren, any and all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 continuous hours. Police, fire, and emergency medical services will be unavailable until tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. when the purge concludes. Blessed be our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all. I'm gonna need you to stop screaming because it really gets on my nerves. So, unless you want me to shut you up, I suggest you do it real quick. Thank you. Now, I'm going to keep you tied up because I don't know you and I don't trust you. I don't trust anyone. Not tonight, anyway. I found you in the street. I'm surprised you weren't dead. Any longer out there, and I'm sure you would have been. What exactly were you doing out there, anyway? Were you out there trying to have a little purge yourself? Trying to unleash the beast, as they say. No? Then what was it that could possibly drive someone like you to wander around on a night like this? Did you fancy yourself a stroll down the blood-soaked block? Your car broke down. Likely story. Because I have trouble believing anyone would be stupid enough to be on the road so close to commencement. Maybe you're just incredibly unlucky. Or maybe not, considering I actually found you alive in the middle of the street, no less. At first, I took you for bait, a trap. It's a pretty common trick, really, leaving someone out in the open to lure some poor naive soul close enough before getting the drop on him. But I'm pretty seasoned by now. I've seen just about anything you could imagine, and then some. I know every trick in the book, and I know well enough to not trust anyone even if you're trying to save their life. You know, some people just aren't grateful. Are you grateful? Or should I throw you back outside to fend for yourself for another eight and a half hours? No? Then maybe you should say thank you. 
you're welcome. Oh yeah, I've been going out on purr tonight for years now, but maybe not for the reason you think. Do you even understand what the purge is? I mean, truly understand it. It's masqueraded as a way to vent the negative energy pent up inside of you. To release any animalistic urges that you have. So that way, for the next 364 days of the year, you can be a bright and shining, upstanding American citizen. It allows you to play out your darkest fantasies so they can't plague you for the rest of the year. And it's praised again and again. Look what the purge has done for the entire rest of the year. There's hardly any crime. There's little unemployment. So few live in poverty, all thanks to our new founding fathers. Would you agree with that? Would you say that's true? Come now, be honest. Do you think the purge has made America great again? Well, do you want to know what I think? I think the Founding Fathers are no more than terrorists that want to be worshipped like gods. The Purge is an abomination, and using it as the front for a better country, a cleaner country, is only hiding its true purpose. The Purge is a culling, a culling of the low class, a systematic elimination of those who can't afford it to protect themselves. Fewer people are living below the poverty line because those who live below the poverty line don't survive this night. And the government sees to that, personally. While you were out there on the streets, did you happen to see any big white semis pass you by? Hmm. Their government-operated vehicles, filled with firepower and tactical teams. They go into the projects and the ghettos and eliminate them. They target specific buildings for the ground troops to infiltrate and kill everyone inside. Poverty is directly related to crime. Every issue we've ever had can virtually be traced back to this financial inequality, but instead of curing it, they kill it, again and again. I don't care if you don't believe it, but you better be glad that I do, or you wouldn't be sitting here right now. I've seen it, I've seen it happen time and time again, and that's why people like me do what we do. That's why we prowl the streets on this night from hell and search for those like yourself. The stragglers, the victims of this cruel holiday. I'm not going to hurt you or kill you unless you give me a reason to. You're in a safe house right now. One of many we have dotted around the city. You comply with our rules, and you can stay here until morning. Defy them, and you're going to wish you were back out on the street. We're just some people who are tired of seeing the suffering. Just some people who are ready to see a revolution and a revolt take place against these political thugs who think they can walk all over we the people. Most of us have been deeply affected by the purge, lost someone, lost everyone. I can tell by that look on your face, you know what that's like. You've lost something to this madness too, haven't you? I'm sorry. 
A long time ago, on a purge night, I lived in one of those buildings chosen to be cleansed. I watched my neighbors, my friends, and my family. I watched them all become victims. Somehow, I survived. I have five gunshot wounds in my chest, and the scar here is where one bullet grazed my temple. Some people who were out looking for survivors, for stragglers, for victims, they found me. I was brought to a safe house, much like this one. Some people would say that I was lucky to be alive, but I wouldn't. Since then, since that night, I've dedicated my life to trying to save as many as I could. I joined the ranks of those who saved me. They trained me to do things that I never thought I could. Every purge I go out, onto the streets, doing what I can. I used to be afraid. I used to jump at the sound of every gunshot, and my heart would threaten to burst from my chest every time I saw a speck of blood. But I didn't stop, and I got stronger. Now I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I fear no evil. I have seen things you couldn't dream up in your worst nightmares, and I don't even flinch, because now when I take to the streets on purge night, evil fears me. I won't pretend that I've taken some moral high ground or that I'm some selfless Robin Hood vigilante. This is how I get my revenge. Every life I save is a life that keeps on in spite of all their efforts to snuff it out. I live in spite of them. I don't expect you to understand me or my motives. At least I wouldn't have. If you hadn't lied to me about your car breaking down, you weren't on the street by chance. What's the point of trying to cover it up now? I saw your face when I asked you if you lost someone to the purge. And you have, haven't you? That's why you were out there tonight. You wanted your own revenge, but you were so woefully unprepared. Look, I'm not blaming you. Or judging you. I've been doing this for a long time. Ten years now, I've been wandering the streets on Purge Night. I won't tell you revenge is wrong. I won't tell you that your efforts are in vain. But I will tell you that it's not easy. I'm willing to bet you've never even so much as looked out your window on Purge Night before. Have you? I'm not blaming you for wanting justice. In fact, I'd like to help you get it. I told you my story. I've been in your place. I've been in that chair on the other end of this speech. I told you I joined the ranks of those that saved me. Because they also offered me a way to fight for my justice just as I am offering you now. You can join us. I'll teach you how to survive the night and so much more. You'll have your revenge again and again. Your very existence will be a defiance to them. Every life you save will be an act of revolt against them. Every life you take.
take will be in rebellion. What do you say? Welcome to the resistance. <laughs>